is the residential burr dead? In today's video, we're going to talk about scalability and repeatability of the burr as well as current market conditions. We're also going to take a look at some products to help with your affordability moving forwards and also whether infill and construction might be the evolution of the burr. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Aaron and Josh, the Finley Mortgage Team, and today we want to touch on, is the residential bird dead? That is quite a decently controversial topic. Most investors made a ton of money in burr projects in the last few years. It's kind of like the entry level phase to real estate investing. You know, you buy, you buy a property, you do some renovations to it, you rent it out, you refinance it, you repeat the process. And the great thing about the last few years in the market is in an up market, it's great to be able to access that equity, pull your investment out and continue to buy moving forward. In market conditions like this where interest rates are rising and valuations are decreasing at such a rapid pace, you know, it begs the question, is the residential burr dead and how, how can you do it in 2023? Yeah, I think, you know, it, is real estate dead? No, real estate's not dead. You know, we're going through a cycle right now where it's gonna take a few years for us to get back up to these 2021, 22, you know, pre-down market prices, but it, it does really, you know, beg the question as to, you know, how effective are these burrs going to be? I think the days of your 100% your burrs, your 90% burrs are gone for the most part right now while the market is in recovery mode. Obviously, we're still seeing investors being able to burr their projects out and they're able to get some of that equity out, but it's, it's not to the same effectiveness that we saw over the last few years while that market was just red hot. Moving forwards, you're really going to have to start dialing in your numbers and doing a lot more due diligence and doing a lot more, you know, looking ahead to see, okay, you know, timing of your burn, how long you're going to be in that burn and when is that refinance going to take place? If you're buying a property right now, which is, you know, mid October, 2022, and you're only going to be in that for maybe three months, you're probably going to have a, a, a trickier time getting that equity out just with the way the rates are going um, and also where the market is going versus if you're buying a property right now and maybe it's gonna take you a year to complete that, you're probably looking at a, uh, you know, a more beneficial situation on that one year burr, just given where that market might be slightly towards more recovery state uh, and hopefully the interest rates are a little bit more favorable a year from now. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. One of the, uh, one of the aspects of the burr that you know, isn't included in the, in the burr acronym you know, is, is market exposure. And I think a lot of people forgot about that aspect of, the, of an actual project. You know, people who purchased maybe seven months ago, they're really feeling the effects of what market exposure looks like. You know, if you're in a project for too long and the market turns and you're slightly underwater or now you're significantly underwater, you know, that burr is no longer a burr. Now you owe capital. Now you either have line of credit of it, um, that's being used, you owe money back to people. You know, that whole market exposure aspect of the burr is something to keep in mind. And it, if it affects the, the last part of the burr, which is like the scalability aspect, the repeating of the process. And you know, for the last two or three years, the repeatability of it has been, you've been able to plan it out because there are some banks out there that allow you to rent a loft set of property, essentially meaning if you can take 50% of the rent and it covers your, your mortgage payment, you can continue to scale moving forward. And I think as you, enter this market, it's going to become more challenging to be able to scale your residential real estate portfolio because that 50% of your rental income no longer is going to cover the, the amount of debt you're looking to take out to pay back you know, the invested capital into the project. So the scalability of that on the residential side, I think is going to become a little bit more challenging. And as you said, if you do, you're going to have to dial in your numbers to really understand, you know, if I refinance at say six six percent, six and a half percent, to pull out eighty percent loan to value, my as complete value, you know, am I underwater on this project? Like, is, is my rental income going to cover that? I foresee if you're going to be moving into the burr strategy on the residential side, it's going to have to be multifamily units, triplexes and fourplexes, something that's going to create a lot of cash flow to be able to cover any sort of like higher interest debt that we're seeing in the market. Yeah, and you know, speaking of the repeating process, a lot of that 
debt has to do with being able to pay your debt down. You know, I, I don't see too many investors, um, for the majority at least, that are walking in and doing you know cash down payment and cash renovations. It's a lot of drawing from these readvanceable lines, which you know when you're looking to do your next purchase, we have to take that into consideration. If you're putting your renovations on a credit card or a line of credit, you know, you're using 3% of that outstanding balance as your monthly payment when you're qualifying, which gets pretty large when you're doing renovations upwards of $100,000, $200,000 in some of these projects. So, you know, if you're not able to get all your money back and you're looking at a 60% burr or a 65% burr, you know, there's a lot of that money left on that credit cards and those lines of credits. You got to carry that over to your next project um, and including your, your new mortgage that you're taking out on the refinance. So it is going to be a bit more difficult to be able, able to do that repeating of the process. And we are going to have to take a look at different ma uh, methods to be able to help with that affordability. One of those is going to be obviously increasing the amount of units that we can rental offset. Um Another is going to be, you know, looking at products that have larger amortizations. There are lenders out there that are offering 35 and 40 year amortizations, um, you know, on the B side. Uh, with that, along coupled with like the increase in debt servicing that we can use, and some other cool projects or products on the B side where, you know, they're using a little bit more of the rental income. Um, they can, you know, qualify at contract rate instead of that 2% stress test, which I think is going to be a huge product moving forward. I think we're going to see a lot more people doing a short term transition into those B products to help allow them to uh, continue to move forward with the birth. Yeah, I think that you know, looking at different types of capital is probably a strategy that most investors are going to look at when exiting these, these birds that they're in right now to be able to stabilize cash flow and to maybe get them to a market where we do see increasing values. Um, there's quite a bit of, uh, of challenges right now happening with investors who are trying to either um, sell a property that's not moving or looking to restructure their debt right now. But you know, plan B never uh, is av as advantageous as plan A right now. So you know, a little bit of triage is happening in the market, but being able to scale, it's still viable, it's just probably different products and solutions are going to have to be implemented to be able to do it effectively. Yeah, and I think, you know, something else to take in mind too is, you know, if you are using other people's money to help with your burr, you know, you have to have some conversations ahead of time and, you know, get some things in writing on your JV agreements or whatever it is. Because if you're borrowing 100 grand and you come out and you're only getting 60 grand back on your, you know, after your equity takeout, you know, what happens to that additional $40,000 that you borrowed? So, you know, these are the conversations you're gonna have to start having with your partners, you know, put those contingency um, pathways into effect ahead of time where, okay, we get to the refinance and we can only get 50% back, you know, we go this way. If we can get 60, 70% back, you know, we go this way. That's gonna help with two things. One, first thing is gonna be your time to market. If you have to spend two months trying to figure out what strategy you wanna implement, you know, that's, that's more time you're spent in, in high interest private debt likely, um, and that's eating away at your bottom line. Two, you know, time to market again, you're also looking at, you know, where's the market going? And if the market is starting to recover, and you know, the prices are, are going back up, you know, you want to be able to get into the market while the prices are low. So being able to make those snap decisions and having those pathways already laid out is going to be beneficial for people moving forwards. For sure. Um, another thing that I think most investors should keep in mind is how the banks are perceiving investments at the moment. You know, from a conventional side, banks are being conservative. They're a for-profit organization. They are finding ways to reduce loan to value, to tighten up their underwriting process. Um, and, you know, in the past we've seen burrs being able to happen you know, very quickly. You know, if you were able to prove capital expenditure on a, on a project and you were able to show, let's say I put $100,000 into this project, but I was in it for three months, but you know, the value is there. Um, most banks were okay with being able to refinance. We're starting to see a lot of banks uh, tighten up their actual restrictions. You know, the official rules were, you know, you need to be in a project for 12 months to be able to refinance out. There was a lot of leeway in the last few years about that they're moving back to that. You know, it's becoming very difficult now to be able to refinance a property within 12 months now. So keep that in mind that if you are getting into a quick flip project, it might be a little bit more challenging moving into conventional debt than it has been in the last few years. Yeah, and keeping on that too, you know, if you um, uh, are looking to do a refinance, especially within six months, one thing you gotta keep in mind is these lenders are gonna start asking where your down payment came from. So if you borrowed that down payment from an investor that's not on title, uh, you know, that's going to be an issue moving forward you might be sitting in that product you know for the full 12 months so keep in mind that the lenders are you know like Josh said cracking down on the requirements they're going to be asking for documentation it's a lot of the birds that I've done in the last few months granted they were under six months but they've all asked for a source of down payment and where it's come from and they're all wanting to make sure that it follows these AML regulations so we're looking at you know 
you know, lines of credits, HELOCs, and gifted funds for immediate family members, and then obviously your, your own resources with that 90-day history. But you know, if you can't show that and we can't get the lender to, to sign off on that, you're gonna be stuck in that product you know, until the year's up and then taking a look at a refinance. Yeah, and, and that kind of like pushes you towards a situation where you need to focus on your acquisition financing. Like, if, if it's gonna be more difficult for you to get out of um, the debt you currently have, you know, maybe you want to make sure that if you have a JV partner or if you are the partner on title, that you are qualifying for conventional debt. Maybe you don't buy that burr or the property that is really in really, really bad shape. Maybe you buy one that just needs cosmetic renovations right now. You decrease the risk of not being able to get out of it right away and having a lower carrying cost on, on the capital while it's invested in the project because, you know, odds are you know, it's going to be a little bit more challenging moving forward. Yeah, I agree. And uh, focusing on just the borrower cover in themselves. You know, I've, I've had a few projects where the borrowers got into a project and then you know one of the partners left their job heading up into the refinance and you know that is going to impact your ability to to get the refinance done. If we need your income to help qualify and you've lost that income, you're not getting your money out. So, you know, if you're in a position where you're in your job and you're in your nine to five and you're using real estate as a you know method to help get out of that plan that all accordingly. Don't get into a bunch of burrs and then you know close two and you still got three going on and you're like, I got some money, I wanna quit my job because now you're definitely not gonna be able to exit out of those remaining projects. So make sure your timelines are matching up, figure out where you're going to be six months, 12 months down the road from now and is that going to be um, you know, on the positive side of completing your project or are you gonna create a negative aspect for you moving forwards and you know essentially stop you from being able to pull that money out? Because the last thing you wanna do is get into a private and then refinance into an even larger private debt. Yeah, no, the only person who makes money you know, is the brokers and the lenders in that situation, and obviously you don't want to be in that situation. One of the last parts of the burr is actually you know, having a property valued and then refinancing the property. Refinancing right now has changed in regards to how valuations are being completed. In an up market, you, know, you can almost guarantee appreciation on your asset. You force appreciated it through investing capital into the project to be able to increase the value of the property. Now we're seeing when appraisers are going out to projects, they're adding actual depreciation in value, which is something that we've never seen before um, as, as brokers. And it's, it's interesting to see that these values are actually adding some sort of depreciation to a market. Um, you know, we've seen people who are in projects and who have expected significant increases in value where maybe they're just getting based off where the purchase price was at three or four months ago. So keep in mind that banks are now requiring that the comps that we're using are extremely recent, 30, 60 days, because when you see, when you see a drastic decrease in value over a short period of time, they want to make sure that they're valuations that they're lending on are accurate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the last thing I want to touch on is you know, where burrs might be evolving too and um, you know getting away from these single family home just renovations and you know making the house look a lot nicer doing you know the fixtures the floors the walls updating the cabinets and whatnot but maybe moving into actual um, infill type construction projects where you're you're buying these residential properties rezoning them for more medium density and you know doing a full construction development project I think you know the upscale on this and the upside on this is just going to be astronomical um, you know for one given where we are in our you know in the environment of housing we're super short we're very low on supply um, the big development projects are already a few years behind due to covid and material shortages and, and increasing costs that way but i think you know as an investor looking at a way to be able to get your most amount of money back and be able to walk away from, from a project with your most amount of cash flow increasing the amount of units you have and being able to set those high market rents right at the end of your project is is going to give you the best value obviously it you know means you need a little more money it's not the cheapest thing in the world to be able to do the rezoning and obviously the development um, charges and the, the fees that come along with that are a little bit higher. But for those investors that are in a position to be able to afford it or you know create the, the JVs, um, the GPLPs to be able to move forward and do this, um, I think this is where we're gonna start to see a lot of the shifts and a lot of the movement going. It means you're gonna be able to incorporate maybe the MLI Select product into your, you know, your burr, into your infill development, which is gonna give you, you know, great structuring, 95% loan to value, 50% amortization or 50 year amortization if you can uh, meet all the points but um, some cool products out there that I think are going to allow the bird to evolve into uh, a bit more of a development project. They completely agree so you know the question was is the residential bird dead? No, the residential burr isn't dead. People are still going to be able to do this, but keep in mind that you need to dial in your as complete value. It's essentially right now catching a falling knife. So if you can find a really great deal, phenomenal. You know, I think it's a great opportunity and there's still a lot of money to be made, but the market has changed and there's a handful of factors that are going to affect your ability to burr 
a property moving forward in 2023. So just keep all those factors in mind. If you guys have any questions for Aaron and myself about anything we spoke about today, please feel free to reach out to us. If you like this content, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It allows us to be able to create more content like this for you guys. Um, and if you guys are looking to get in contact with us, our contact information is going to be down below. Feel free to reach out. Mm -hmm.